I'm Andrew with Baker's Gas, and we're here today with the new bolt 255, and we have the all-new Alumapro Lite uh, push-pull gun that uh, Miller just launched here. We have it uh, hooked up on the multi 255. So uh, what we're going to do in this video today is show this gun off. I'm going to show the hookup, drive rolls, the system, how it runs, and then we're going to weld with it on auto set and pulse and manual. We're going to give it a run for its money here. Um, but first things first, let's show this off. Awesome. This gun's 25 foot long, um, standard. So it's two pounds, the gun itself, and it's a push-pull system. So what that means is we're pushing from the back and we're pulling from the front. So it's got a drive roll system in the front and then we're pushing from the back. So as you can see here, got my aluminum wire set up. And we got our drive rolls here. Now, one thing to point out about these drive rolls is they are a Oh, and we're running over 35 wire. There are a U-groove drive roll. So what that does is it cups the aluminum wire, doesn't crush it, doesn't bite into it, and it pushes it smoother than what, like a V-groove or a knurled V-groove. Um, you typically, we turn that thing, I got it on about one and a half, almost two, on our pressure. Now, is that where it's supposed to be? I just kind of set it to where once it, it, it was slipping and it starts pushing, because you don't want to, Biggest thing about this wire is it'll bird nest if you get too much tendon. So if you crank that down the four, it's gonna bird nest on you. It's a nightmare to fix. Your 14 pin cable connects right there. Mid gun slides in the regular mid gun slot. Come back around to the front here. So, just looking at this, we got it on MIG. Now I can turn it off auto set, but it gives you the, how to hook up, where to be. We go to setup and we can change our wire type. From 4, 000, we could go silicon bronze, 4000 series, 5000 series. So it goes through all our wire types. We'll run 4000 series aluminum. Go down, wire diameter, we'll run 035. Inductance, I got it set at 15. Uh, pre flow is 0.2. And then post flow, none. Run in mode is just 60 inches a minute. So that's just your initial run in of uh, fast tech is not enabled here, or it is enabled, crater mode is disabled, and then spot time. So if you're just spot welding some stuff, you can set up a time, and it'll just weld for that amount of time, and then go right back. So we'll go back to home. So we got this 18 volts, 234 inches a minute. That's what came up when I turned it on. We'll go auto set. There again, it goes, shows you how to set up everything. So there again, pull, we, we got, I'll shut the pulse off. Sorry. Shut Paul stop. So we got aluminum 4000 series, 035 on 316 material, which is what we have. Target is 23 and a half full, 23.6, and 468 inches a minute. That's just the target setting. You can go above that, you can go below that if you don't like it, but that's just the auto set target setting. And we'll go back to that and you can see it, light, it lights up the target setting there. Um, pretty neat. Auto set is just for. You know, you throw your material, your wire size, and your material thickness, and it gives you the parameters. Um, we're gonna try that out first, just to see how it goes. Now, on this unit, we can pulse this aluminum too. So, we're gonna give that a shot. So before we weld with it on auto set, we'll go over the gun components here. So it's got this little uh, door here. We flip that door up inside. You got your drive roll, and then your guide, your guide roller. So this has a groove in it, as you can see, and it's just guiding that wire it spins and then your drive roller is on the other side and it is a knurled wheel that grips that aluminum wire and then this is your tensioner here so you lift up on that and it lifts the tension off and then so that wire will freely go through there so what the point of that is when you're feeding it through you lift that up so it's not this tensioner pulley is not riding on the drive roller and what happens when you lift that up and now it just feeds the wire directly straight through and you flip that back down when you're done puts tension on the wire causing it that wire to pull flip that door back down good thing about this gun here it takes your um slim or your tapered stuff or your slim consumables and it takes the center fire nozzle center fire tip now you can get the quick twist uh, consumables for this you just got to change out your diffuser and that's just your standard Bernard D-1 or DS-1 and then your nozzles a NS series so 
the slim series and then your regular uh, T-035 contact tip. Pretty nice setup. Um, I like it because if you already have a Bernard setup, you can use the same consumables in this gun as you do in your other Bernard gun. Um, you don't have to go out and buy new consumables. Very cool. Trigger on the bottom. Um, and I'm going to be honest with you, not my favorite feature. I keep hitting it every time I go to grab it, and it keeps feeding wire, as you can see. But it is pretty nice when you're going because you can almost two-hand that whole thing. And then this is your wire feed speed. So if you adjust your wire feed speed there. Now we got to show this better. We'll get out of auto set. And then you just move it. See, I'm going down on my screen there. And then if I want to go back up, going up. Pretty neat. Pretty neat. So you can adjust it right Why you don't have to walk back to the machine. Very cool. So let's give this thing a shot. We'll put it on auto set. We got some aluminum to try. And uh, we're going to try and weld with it here. So we flip that back a little bit. All right, so we got some pieces of aluminum here. Got it on 3 16 I'm just going to do a couple of tacks here and then we're going to give this thing a shot. piece tacked up. Um, now when you're doing this with a push-pull gun, I prefer to do a forehand or push uh, motion where you're pushing it forward, not a drag or a backhand motion. What happens when you drag or backhand motion, it causes um, a soot buildup on your weld. But if you're pushing, your argon's covering your the, your, the forward motion, so your weld turns out nice and bright shiny. Um, Alright, let's give this thing a shot. So, as you can see there, um, laid a nice weld down and that's just auto set. I didn't, didn't really adjust anything. I just set up my material thickness in that. So you can see I just welded that one corner. And then what we're going to do is we're going to flip over to Pulse. Now, in Pulse, we're just going to leave that auto set. You can see we got 035. We got 316. It's going to give me 520 inches a minute. That's its recommended setting and arc length of 50. Now, I'm not going to mess with anything. I'm going to weld the other side. You're going to notice a, an audible difference between it. Um, it's gonna make like a, uh, a well, it's gonna make a pulse. You'll see right here. So there you go. So this side was technically a straight CV, and then this side was a pulse uh, side. The pulse side here. Do you see a difference? Not a whole lot of difference in between them, but where the pulse comes into play is uh, distortion uh, or heat distortion. So when you're uh, when you're welding on thinner, say thinner sections of aluminum, or um, you add a little motion. I didn't do too much motion. I just just straight push motion. I didn't do any kind of whip or anything like that. But I've seen uh, fab shops where they they do like a whip motion with the pulse and it gives them a nice stack of dimes look. It, it is pretty cool. Um, but pulse is a good, uh, like I said, for heat distortion, that thing, thinner material, uh, puts less heat into the material. And sometimes it's easier to weld uh, with pulse, out of position using pulse. But uh, that's the two cents on the pulse thing. So all in all, this, this um, setup is pretty nice. I, I mean, it's, it's not bad in the hand, it's actually pretty light. Um, if you can configure the uh, whip itself around you, kind of in a motion like that, and so it's not, you're not dragging on you. And then, like I said before, your trigger's down here so you can use two hands when you're doing it. Um, now, I know obviously sometimes you can't use two hands when you're doing some sort of a fab, fab layout or anything like that, but still very easy to use, light, um, and it welds very nice. Now. This gun will go on the Multimatic 255, the Miller Mag 255, the Miller Mag 252, and the Miller Mag 350P. So it fits all that line of uh, machines. They do make a heavier duty uh, 
Lumen Pro gun. Um, it's about six, seven hundred dollars more than this. Now this gun runs about fifteen hundred dollars. Um, it's been very popular, and who I would recommend this for is uh, light fabrication. This gun's got a sixty percent duty cycle. And obviously, it's air cooled, um, but it's it. it it's a nice gun for what it is. The heavier duty one has a 100% duty cycle, but like I said, the price difference on it is, it's pretty high. It's a lot higher than this one. But trailer manufacturers, uh, you know, any kind of repair job on dump boxes or, or fan boats, anything kind of like that, or boats in general, pontoons, well on those, I think this thing would be a great fit if you already have a Miller Matic 255 or Multi Matic 255 or any one of those machines this gun would be a good fit for. Um, but yeah, for the price on it, it's a, it's a decent gun. Now, this, this unit does not come with the drive rolls for the aluminum, nor does the gun come with the drive rolls. You gotta buy those separately. It doesn't come with wire, so you gotta buy that separately, and consumables. It comes with a handful of consumables, but um, you gotta purchase those too. We're gonna link that all down below on what goes with this gun, and we're in kind of a package deal. So, if you have any questions, please leave them below. Thanks again for watching, and stay tuned for more videos.